Welcome everyone as you get settled in. Uh, my name is Peter Allen and I'm uh, happy to work with the Eastside Education Foundation and our MC tonight, Mr. Manny Barbera. Um, Manny will get started in just a second, but want to let folks um, trickle in. We're going to have quite a few folks, I think, in the Zoom with us tonight. Um, some, some brief housekeeping items before uh, we get into things. Um, we are recording uh, the presentation, as you may have heard on, on the way in. If uh, you're not comfortable, you are free to stay off video the entire time. Um, uh, we have some presenters and folks who will be going on video, but if you're not, feel free to stay off video. Um, and please keep yourself muted unless you are speaking or asking a question. Um, we will have time at the end of the presentation. This is going to be an hour presentation or an hour uh, event. And then uh, probably around uh, 45 minutes from now, we'll have time to close out with, some, with your questions. So if you have any questions, if you'd like to post them and then, uh, so you don't forget them, you can post them in the chat and we'll get to them um, as we uh, get to that portion of the, uh, the presentation. Or if you just wanna wait and raise your Zoom hand when we get to that point, you can do so. Um, and I wanna point out right now um, that uh, we do have Spanish and Vietnamese language interpretation available for your questions and hopefully, and for our responses. So um, William, if you wanna let folks know um, that you are here. Sí. Um, buenas tardes. Eh, tenemos ahí uh, el servicio de traducción eh, o interpretación aquí en esta junta para sus preguntas que puedan tener sobre el contenido de la junta que vamos a presentar hoy. Excellent. Thank you, sir. And then, Lynn, if you could just uh, say in Vietnamese. Yeah. À, kính chào quý phụ huynh, thì cảm ơn quý phụ huynh đã nhín chút thời gian đến dự cái buổi uh, Eastside Education Foundation tối ngày hôm nay. Thì em tên là Linh Tô, em sẽ trợ giúp trong việc uh, dịch tiếng Việt nếu như mà quý vị cần sự trợ giúp. Xin chân thành cảm ơn. Great, thank you very much. All right, uh, and with that, we've got a pretty good crowd here. So Manny, if you wanted to get started, I think we should um, get rolling with the presentation and then folks right. can join as we, as we move along. Thank you very much, Peter, and thank you, William and Lynn, and welcome everyone to this evening's uh, presentation on um, college in my future. It's part of the uh, Eastside Education Foundation, and um, the Eastside Education Foundation um, exists to support the students um, that attend the districts within the Eastside Alliance, and I think we have a slide that you can kind of see what uh, what those, which districts those are. And there you go. And these are um, the students who attend the Eastside Union High School District and the seven elementary theater districts, uh, Alam Rock, Berryessa, Evergreen, Franklin, McKinley, Mount Pleasant, Oak Grove, and Orchard. And our mission is to port, support you, students and families, uh, through innovative programs. And you're gonna hear this evening about a tremendous opportunity that is open only to you, it's a, called the Spartan Eastside Promise. And then we have some ancillary um, uh, programs that go along with that. We have a, a great presentation from you from um, uh, San Jose State, which you'll hear in just a second. We'll give you some information about scholarships. And then um, you're gonna have an opportunity to hear from some students who are attending San Jose State right now. And you'll have an opportunity to hear from their perspective and also give you an opportunity to ask any questions through the chat um, feature on Zoom. So if you come up with questions, you can just start thinking about them. You can ask them as we go along. And because we want you to start thinking about uh, your future and um, what the future of work might look like. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce to you um, from San Jose State, uh, Amanda Aldama, who is our liaison um, with San Jose State, our closest partner. Uh, we would not be able to have the Spartan Eastside Promise if it wasn't for the cooperation of San Jose State. It is a very unique and special opportunity. We're delighted to have uh, Amanda with us this evening. She is the program lead for student outreach and recruitment. So Amanda, thank you so much for being with us this evening and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much for having me. So I'll go ahead and share screen here for our presentation on the admissions requirements as well as the Spartan Eastside Promise. So as Peter mentioned at the beginning, if you do have any questions, please feel free to put those in the chat. We will be addressing those at the end of the presentation 
as well. But we'll go ahead and get started here. Once again, my name is Amanda Fernandez, and I am the Spartan News I Promise program lead here at San Jose State University. I am a Spartan through and through. I've been here for about 11 years now, first as a student, and then, of course, as a staff member as well. So you can definitely say, um, been really part of the Spartan community for quite a long time. I'm also an Eastside alum as well, having graduated from Silver Creek High School. So very familiar with this experience that our students have of you know, going from our local high schools to the local universities. My information is here. It will be shared again near the end of the presentation as well. But tonight I want to talk a little bit about our admission requirements, the Spartan Eastside Promise, as well as resources for your students. So as we jump right into it, San Jose State University is part of the CSU system, the nation's largest four-year public university system. We pride ourselves on providing students with a high quality hands-on education that is student-centered. So what does that mean? Well, of course, there's projects, there's tests, there's homework, but all of this is to prepare students for the current and future workforce demands, to not just study the theory, but put that theory into practice. And for San Jose State University specifically, Almost all of our programs require students to get an internship before they graduate, therefore getting their work experience and building their resume before they even have that diploma in hand. Now, continuing on with a little bit more fun facts on SJSU, we were recently ranked the number one most transformative university in the nation. I can definitely speak to how SJSU has transformed my life, having been a first generation student and now you know, a staff member here with so many opportunities that I didn't even know were possible. Now, SJSU is also ranked the number seven university among the top you know, Western universities offering bachelor's and master's degrees, as well as one of the top colleges for diversity and most innovative schools, which I've personally seen as well. You can read more on our rankings as well as um, some stories from our Spartans at sjsu.edu slash transform. Moving right along, SJSU is quite a large campus. We have over 33,000 Spartans, however, it truly is a community of support because even though there is a large amount of students, our classroom sizes on average are about 32 students to one professor. And as you start to move up to those upper division courses, about 29 students or so. I had a class that was about 12 students for my internship class. And out of all the classes I took, only one was a large lecture style of 300 people like the movies. Again, providing students with the opportunity to meet with their professor, get to know their classmates, and really build those relationships, which are important for networking, getting letters of recommendations from the professor, for jobs, for internships and graduate school. As we move along, there is so much that goes involved with student life at SJSU, whether students are part of any of our 450 student organizations, maybe part of our starting a social justice movement. Maybe they're part of an opportunity that's related to their major. For example, the students in that left-hand corner built that car and raced it against other campuses. Maybe they're performing, maybe they're part of our radio station, so many opportunities. Because for us, these experiences go hand in hand with earning your degree to help you with that next step along towards your education and your career. Now, if that next step involves athletics, well, SJSU is Division I in the Mountain West Conference. These are our official teams. However, we have multiple club sports as well that students can be able to engage with. More information on our official sports teams can be found at sjsuspartans.com, as well as the rankings such as we have sent several Spartans off to the Olympics, with over 20 of them placing in various medals. As I mentioned before, SJSU truly is a community of support. This is just a glimpse at some of the support services that we have, such as academic advising, multiple cultural centers, our Pride Center, our Undonkey Spartans Resource Center, and our SJSU Food Pantry, just to name a few. Now, part of that support also includes making sure our students feel safe in their environment. So if you are interested in learning how SJSU has been addressing the COVID-19 pandemic, you are more than welcome to visit our health advisory's website as listed here to see all of the latest information and resources for our Spartans and the community. Now for our future Spartans that are thinking about, you know, I wanna to go to San Jose State or I wanna to go to college, but I don't know what major, or I know the major, but I don't know what school yet, visit calstate.edu slash apply. This website allows you to explore all 23 CSU campuses as there are over 4,000 different undergraduate and graduate degree programs available. 
Now you can use this website to be able to compare the campuses, see which schools are in a big city or a small town, have a basketball team, have the major that you're interested in, and so much more. However, you do not want to create an application yet. This is only for seniors. So anyone who is not a senior can definitely explore this website, look at the different campuses, compare, even take virtual tours, but you do not want to create your application until October 1st of your senior year. A little bit more on this timeline. You would apply October 1st through November 30th of senior year. The dates are here for our juniors and our sophomores. That's around the same time that you apply for financial aid as well, whether that's through the FAFSA or the California DREAM Act. Then around late February, early March, you find out if you have been offered admission. So those of you who have senior friends, they just might find out this week or they have just found out. What of exciting times here. And then we have the rest of the timeline as follows through with our summer program. So our Eastside Union High School District Spartan summer program that happens right in the beginning of summer to help you with this transition from high school to college and connect you with your SESP peer mentor to guide you from college exploration to college graduation. Now, what do students study when they come to SJSU? Well, we have over 134 bachelor's and master's degrees with 110 concentrations. Some of our popular programs are listed here, such as forensic science, kinesiology, computer science, and so much more that you'll be able to find in our steps to admission brochure near the end of this presentation. As we move along, as I mentioned, we want to make sure that you are ready for that next step. So that comes with connecting you to employers through our career center. Our career center brings multiple employers to campus in person and virtually through job fairs, through different events. They have opportunities for you to be able to get assistance in writing a resume, practicing for interviews, searching for internships. As SGSU supports more than 25,000 jobs in the state of California, many of those here in the Silicon Valley. So we talked about all the great things about SJSU. We talked about our programs. How do you become a Spartan? How do you get ready for those admission requirements? Well, we are looking for three things. The first is that students complete their A through G requirements with a grade of C minus or better. The second is that they meet or exceed the CSU minimum eligibility index. And the third is that they meet the admission selection process called impaction, all which we'll cover in the next few slides. I also want to highlight that the CSU has continued to temporarily suspend the SAT and ACT test requirement for fall 2023 applicants. A final decision has not yet been made for classes beyond this, but we do expect to hear from the Chancellor's Office fairly soon regarding this. As we move along to the requirements, I do want to stop for a recommendation from the Chancellor's Office as well that students, as they are starting to plan for their senior year, do plan to take a year-long English and year-long math course their senior year. Now, for the classes that we are requiring, we are looking for the following A through G minimum classes completed with the grade of C minus or better. So that's two years of history, social science, four years of English, three years of math, two years of a lab science, so a biological and a physical, two years of a language other than English, a visual performing art, and an elective, which can be any of these courses not used for those minimum A through Gs. For example, if your student took three years of a language or two years of a visual performing art, all pass with the grade of C minus or better. Now, as we have temporarily suspended the SAT and the ACT test requirement, our minimum GPAs for CSU eligibility for California residents is a 2.5 GPA. For non-residents, it is a 3.0. The way that we calculate the GPA is utilizing the 10th and 11th grade A through G, G, A through G GPA. So these courses taken in sophomore and junior year. It's incredibly important to do your absolute best these years. Applicants that are below these GPA thresholds are not considered for admission at SJSU. Now, you may have heard a term called impaction. Impaction simply means that we receive more applications from eligible students, so students having those 2.5 or 3.0, than what we have seats available for. Therefore, every major at SJSU requires a different eligibility index score, different combination of the GPA and supplemental factors. As you could see here, SJSU does give preference to our local students, which has historically taken the form of a GPA boost. We also provide um, some additional points for the following areas, such as if a student is eligible for the Cal State Apply Fee Waiver, if 
they are first generation or a U.S. veteran. So more on this can be found on our Impaction website, as well as the scores from previous terms as shown here at sjsu.edu slash admissions slash Impaction. So make sure to check that out if you do have any questions on a specific program. Now, where does Spartan East I Promise come into play here? Well, if you are applying to a major, you meet all the requirements such as a 2.5 or higher, you have your A through G's pass with a C minus or better, but you don't meet the impaction for your major. So you don't have the GPA that's required or that particular score as shown previously. However, if you have a 2.75 GPA, and again, meet the A through G's with a C minus or better, you meet all the deadlines, and you're graduating from an eligible Eastside Union High School District School as shown on our website, then rather than having your admission withdrawn, you can get admission to undeclared. So undeclared, you're coming in without a major, but you would not be behind as you would still have the opportunity to connect with the advisor, work with our program, develop your educational plan to transition to a major at a later time. We have a multitude of services through the Spartan East I Promise program, such as I mentioned, our peer mentors, various workshops, the partnership with the East Side Union High School District Spartan Summer Program, and so much more as listed here. More information on our services as well as upcoming workshops can be found on our website, sjsu.edu slash soar slash Spartan East Side Promise. So just to recap, to get admission to SJSU, it's, there's a few possible ways, right? You meet the requirements for your major, you meet the requirements for your second choice major, or you meet the requirements for the Spartan Eastside Promise Program. That's that third layer, that safety net. Otherwise, if you don't meet the impaction requirements or that 2.75, the application is withdrawn. So for those of you who are juniors, sophomores, maybe even freshmen who wanna make sure that you're talking with your counselors, that if you have questions, you are reaching out, you are doing your research, you are seeing if you do meet those requirements and how to be able to get help if you need it. So do your research now is the time as you wanna see if there's a particular requirement for the schools you're interested in, hopefully San Jose State, we would love for you to become Spartans, but every school has different deadlines and different requirements. So make sure that you do your research as of now and reach out to us. We are here to be able to assist you. As I mentioned earlier, we are not requiring the SAT or the ACT for fall 2023. However, if you do happen to take these exams, they may be utilized for your English and math course placement for your first year at SJSU. So more information can be found here as well as practice exams on those respective websites. We also wanna highlight here the AP IBE PLEP exams. While these are not required for admission, a passing score can be able to provide college credit or A through G credit. So if you have questions, once again, talk with your counselor about your options and reach out to us. From here, the pathway to college is fairly simple, making sure that you meet your A through G classes with a grade of C minus or better, that you, <clears throat> excuse me, that you meet with your counselor, you ask those questions, you apply by senior year, October 1st to November 30th, as well as make sure you're meeting all the deadlines. It is so important to make sure you meet the deadlines and ask questions. I cannot emphasize that enough. This brochure, has everything that I talked about in even further detail. So feel free to go ahead and take out your phones, open that camera and scan the QR code to be able to access our most recent steps to admission brochure, as this will be able to show you everything that I talked about again in even further detail. I'll drop the link in the chat for you in a moment as well. My information is also here. So if you have questions, please do reach out via email. Our website shows all of our latest workshops and programs for students. Students can follow us on Instagram, hear our student podcast, take a virtual or in-person tour. A lot of great opportunities to connect with campus. But with that, um, if there are any questions, go ahead and put that in the chat, but I will go ahead and pass it back over to Peter. Excellent. Thanks so much, Amanda, for a great presentation. As always, I hope everyone is as inspired as I am. My parents are both Spartans, and I know a lot of us here are uh, uh, some of us adults here <laughs> are Spartans as well. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're considering, if you're still applying for college, I highly recommend uh, San Jose State. So with that, I'm going to bring Manny back here and going to go back to our slide deck. So just give me one second. And then uh, Manny just gonna, is going to run through just a couple aspects of uh, the Spartan Eastside Promise program. Um, 
uh, especially from the foundation's perspective and some of the, the aspects that we are helping to fund. Um, and then we'll get to a, a little panel discussion with some of our, our Spartan Promise students. So many, why don't you? Thank you very much, Peter. And thank you very much, Amanda. Again, a reminder, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to use the, uh, the chat. And I also, by the way, am a Spartan alumni. I'm an English learner and um, first time college going. And uh, just like Amanda, San Jose State changed my life and made a tremendous difference. So um, again, this is a tremendous opportunity. A couple of other things I just want to bring to your attention before we get to the students. Uh, one, we have a partnership with um, Excite Credit Union. And because of that partnership, um, we have a special opportunity for you to start college savings account. And the reason that we do this is that we have learned through research that for students who save as little as $500 in college savings, they are three times more likely to enroll and four times more likely to graduate from college. So we want to encourage, this is just to kind of get your, your mindset, so to speak, um, to let you, to get yourself thinking that yes, you can and will graduate from college. And so these college savings accounts um, are set up especially for you over at Excite Credit Union. This is just kind of shows you some different uh, numbers. The, the earlier you start, the more money that you can save. And what they will do is they will um, um, start off with a uh, $50 uh, account. And um, over time, as you make deposits, they will be able to, to match it. And uh, the information was provided on these slides. And we have a couple of little uh, no, flyers here. Uh, Peter, we can get to the flyer. And now, there you go. Um, and you can also contact Joe, John Hogan. He's the VP of Community Relations. That information is there. And this information will be made available to you. It's called the Step Up Savings. And it's there specifically to kind of get you started. For those of you that are really pretty good at math, you know that getting a 5% annual interest um, is pretty good. And um, it's very unique. And it's only available to you because we have a partnership with XRI Credit Union, they're one of our better funders um, to help support um, the students within the East Side. The other thing that I wanna mention is the scholarship. So in addition to the Spartan East Side Promise admission opportunity, um, and one thing that Amanda um, also runs a summer orientation program. So for students who graduate and are going to San Jose State, we fund a um, support a two week orientation program, which Amanda runs, which allows you to kind of get a head start with getting ready for college at San Jose State, helps you get oriented, helps you get your classes set up. And, um, and it is open for the East Side graduates attending San Jose State. Um, and if you attend the Spartan Promise Summer Program, um, and especially if you're first generation, and especially if you participate in the Silicon Valley Elevate Math, not mandatory, but you get extra credit if you are first generation and Elevate Math, um, we give out scholarships. So in the past couple of years, we've given out about $60,000 worth of scholarships, um, around 1,500 to 2,000. And, um, and they're there uh, to kind of help students kind of get a head start kind of moving, moving forward. We'd love to give a scholarship to everyone, but right now the way it works out, uh, we give about 30, um, and 30 a year, and it goes to students who have an application process, but that's for those students who are already there. But we wanna let you know that this is gonna be waiting for you. So you have the admission to San Jose State, you have the college savings opportunity, and finally, the scholarship um, opportunity as well. So those are there for you. And we also wanted to start doing some what we call mentoring, and it's going to start this evening. We're going to have other presentations moving forward um, to try to reach as many students as we can. So you could tell your friends and other family members. And what we're going to do this evening is we're going to have a little panel discussion with some students who are already attending um, San Jose State. And we have with us um, Tina Tran and Vincent Vu. And they are here and they're going to be part of this um, 
uh, panel discussion. And again, if you have any questions of them, please feel free to use the chat opportunity. Just ask any questions and we will forward them to um, our, um, our panelists. So uh, Tina and Vincent, thank you very much for being with us this evening. And there they are, you could see them. And um, we're gonna start the very first question that uh, I'd like to ask the both of you is, um, what surprised you the most about college that maybe you weren't expecting? Um, Vincent, we'll just start with you because I could see you to my left and then we'll, we'll go to you, Tina, and then we'll reverse it. But what surprised you the most um, about college? I think what really surprised me the most about college was how much freedom that you would have, like just going up and growing up, going to school. There was always that time you go to class eight to like three o'clock in the afternoon. But college isn't like that. College is like a time where you're able to set your own schedule, uh, what times you tend to learn better. Uh, you can wake up then. You can take classes and sign up for classes that you genuinely like, or you can choose a program or a major that you really want to study. So you have a choice in what you're studying. You have a choice in how you set up your schedule. You have a choice on how you spend your time with people uh, and lots of different opportunities to be able to explore your interests. At a school that's so big like San Jose State University, uh, one of the biggest fears that I had when I was going to college was that I had a lot of activities that I liked in high school, but I was really worried like if I would be able to find that in college. And I really liked photography and I was able to find a club at San Jose State that really helped me like be able to continue on my passions and interests. And I'm looking into joining sports too. So there's a lot of different possibilities and choices and a lot of freedom is my favorite part about college and the biggest surprise. So there's nobody telling you what to do, when to study, when to go to class, you have to do it on your own. There's a lot of responsibility then too, right? Because you have to make those decisions on your own. Tina, how about you? I think what surprised me the most about college is the classroom sizes you know growing up watching a lot of movies I saw big lecture halls and I always thought that I would be easily overwhelmed in college but when I started at San Jose State I know Amanda did talk about this earlier but the classroom size was a lot smaller and I really liked being able to have um, classmates nearby and a smaller class um, which made it a little bit more intimate and easier to make friends going into college and on the topic of you know making friends and connections i was really surprised that there was a lot of different clubs and how involved they are within the community because in high school i had um you know been in asb vsa a lot of things just to be in touch with my community but san jose state just did it at a higher level because there were a lot more resources available and i just really enjoyed that involvement and being able to get to know upperclassmen to give me advice and mentorship and i was just overall really surprised about like the intimacy of going to a really big school but still feeling like i had a place to i belonged I'm glad you mentioned that. And I saw Vincent nodding too, because sometimes, you know, you might have some students that are thinking, that's ah, going to be big. I'm going to make me meet people. Am I going to make friends? It worked out. You're able to meet people and there's plenty of activities to engage yourself in. Yeah. So you've got students here today. There might be some high school students um, and you may have uh, some uh, middle school students. What do you wish you knew? If you go back in the time, Going back to high school and middle school, what do you wish you knew that um, you know, you'd want yourself to know and have these students know? Uh, Tina, we'll start with you on this one. Sure. I think growing up, my idea of being able to get into college was just to do everything, be involved in everything, get the best grades. And so I think I spent a lot of my time stressing over that and looking back I would at, tell myself or this is this goes for college too but just looking back I would tell myself to remember to take care of myself because you know if you do burn out easily you will get frustrated and won't make much progress towards your goals so aside from that self-care I would probably also tell myself to just let things go because what is meant to be yours will come I spent a lot of time you know over planning and planning is good, but you know, at some degree, you do have to remember that um, everything comes at its own pace and that you do have to take care of yourself. Wise words that uh, you do need to even, even, uh, you know, middle school, high school, you need to start taking care of yourself. Thank you for that. Uh, Vincent, how about you? 
what would you, if you can go back and um, what do you wish you knew when you were middle school and high school? I think what I wish I would have known back then was that I didn't have to know what major or what I wanted to study because a lot of people always ask kids the question, oh, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And sometimes that can be really limiting because like with your exposure to like, oh, what you currently know in middle school or what you know in high school, it can really limit your possibilities in terms of like the choices that you have. And so like I was just given a few options as a kid, either you're a doctor or you're an engineer or you're a scientist or something like that. And honestly, back then, like if someone told me that you could do what you love for a living, um, like even if it's like something like that seems like ridiculous right now, like um, like a lot of kids are into gaming or like being able to do that, um, turning your passions into a career. Like I wish I knew from a younger age that there is a lot more jobs and a lot more things you can study. So like being open-minded to the question, like, oh, like instead of people asking me like what I wanted to study back then, asking them back, like, huh, like what kind of future can I create as like a kid? Like I, I see this issue and I want to use college as a way to like solve that problem. Um, and also like making sure that like kids know that college is not as scary as, as it sounds because a lot of people are like, oh, you have to take this many classes. You have to take this big test. And it just sounds really overwhelming. But what is really important is to know that you're right where you need to be as a kid growing up in middle school and high school. And there's lots of people who are there to support you along the way. So just being okay with uncertainty and also um, being open to learning is what I wish I knew a lot of, um, especially as a middle schooler, like just being curious, like being curious to anything and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. I, I, what I'm hearing you saying is that you don't have to solve everything all at one time, kind of just keep yourself open to all the different opportunities. There's things that you can do that um, you don't even know, right? There's plenty of opportunities. And you also said something that I think it's really important is, is that it can seem overwhelming, but you'll also grow into it. Like both of you, um, you're not 13, 14 years old anymore, right? So you grew, your mind grew, you learned, and you're able to handle it. And so the message that I'm hearing that you're saying is don't worry, you'll be able to handle it. Just do what you need to do now and you'll go on. Thank you for that. Um, would you have taken, uh, Vincent, I'll go back to you. Would you have taken different courses in any way? Would you have like, oh, I wish I would have done this, or perhaps also say like, I'm glad I did, took the following courses. Anything along that line that you might have done differently or glad so, that you did? I would say a lot of people were really quick um, in like my high school years to stack on like really difficult classes, such as like APs or taking college classes. And for me, I was just like that high school student who was like, oh, I'm not gonna give into this. I'm not gonna take any APs or do any community college classes because I thought it was too hard and I wouldn't be like good at it. So I didn't give myself that opportunity. But now looking back and seeing how my peers were able to, like, to take some APs here and there and use that credit, I wish I would have known that like those classes might have been useful, but also having a balance of um, being able to pick like, oh, like maybe you pick an AP class that you really like instead of trying to overstack and not sleeping. Um, maybe I wish like if I had like one or two AP classes, maybe I could have gotten a feel for what college would have been like. But um, that's something I wish I would have known. But I spent a lot of my time like enjoying my high school years, like taking like elective classes and like student government, yearbook, phot photography. So I, I really chased my passions, but I didn't really challenge myself. And I wish I challenged myself more. So, so maybe take a little bit more challenging courses when, when it was the opportunity availed themselves with that. Okay, thank you. Tina, how about you? I'm so glad to provide the perspective of the students that Vincent mentioned who kept stacking on their courses because that was who I was in high school. Like, again, I mentioned before, you know, um, my idea of getting into a good college from what I heard and seen around was to stack as many AP courses that you could get so that you could understand the rigor of college courses. And I think having so many classes at once overwhelmed me a lot and questioned my ability to succeed in college. And later on, I learned that I could take 
courses at a community college for free and I decided to try it out one summer and to my surprise you know I actually did fairly well maybe even better and succeeded in those courses than my AP courses and I think that just um, gave me a little bit more confidence that I would be able to succeed in college and helped my GPA a lot, you know, having those college courses and then starting in as a freshman, having already known what a college course was going to be like, having those credits and then being able to take additional courses and finish um, my GEs a little bit quicker. Um, I think I would also, looking back, tell myself just to take anything and everything. I also made my schedule a point for it to be, you know, STEM related because I wanted to go into the medical field. But in college, I was taking classes outside of my major. And for um, some background, I was a nursing major or I graduated in December. So I was a nursing major with a double minor in public health and deaf education. And of course, you know, deaf education is something that is not within the medical field, but it is something that I really enjoyed learning about. And I wish that I had more of those fun classes when I was in high school and or middle school, like those elective courses so that I could have something that um, refreshes my mind and something that I'm really interested in learning more about. Tell us a little bit when you said you took classes in community college, people may, may not know, like, what, like you're able to take classes at community college? Yeah, so you are able to do dual enrollment in community college. Um, You can take classes during the school year in the summer, during intercession, practically any time. I think um, you would have to look at the specific community college, but they do have a form where um, it requires your counselor to fill out. And then after that, you're all set to register for classes and take as many as you want that is allowed as a high schooler. Okay, free of cost. It's another option that students may not may not be aware of. Um, Vincent, I'm going to come back to you here. What did you find to be the greatest challenge about going to college? I would say going back to the how I answered the other question with freedom, time management is a really big struggle (laughs) and a challenge in college. Because like I find myself like especially as an East Side kid, like um, (laughs) having to work, having to take classes having to balance family life, having to um, be able to juggle like all my different interests, responsibilities, and just everything together was really overwhelming. So one of the biggest things that I took away from my mentors in college so far is like about time management, how some people were able to like sit me down, talk through like, okay, realistically, this is how much um, you can take on, maybe like taking less classes, or maybe finding a way to like Um, lower commitments or to be able to create a schedule that works for you. So for me, I really like, um, people don't really like early morning classes, but I find myself in a lot of early morning classes because it just clears up the rest of my day to be able to work. And that's really helpful. Um, And also just being able to like know that there are people there to help me with time management. Um, If I had like a problem, like people are pretty flexible about that. Or um, also being able to keep up with assignments. Sometimes professors, like they can be understanding if you talk to them about um, your situation. So like during college, life also happens like in in like school, when you're in high school and stuff, like teachers don't tend to be as understanding, but in college people understand that like there's stuff going on beyond just your education. And I think that's really important. Um, Another thing that's a great challenge is like learning how to fail because there's so many slips up that you can like have in college like during your time you might make a mistake you might fail at a test um, you might do something wrong and being open to that opportunity to fail and then learning from those mistakes is really important Um, and just also working over that ego because sometimes failing can be really hard uh, on yourself but um, picking yourself back up and taking that opportunity to learn is really important so the good news is you have a lot of freedom and no one tells you what to do. The bad news is you have a lot of freedom and no one tells you what to do. I'm glad you said something that's really important. Um, the learning how to fail uh, is such a critical, critical component, especially if you've been always successful in high school and the first time maybe you might get a C or you know, you're not getting, um, you, it might be harder than you think. The importance of knowing that you can Pick yourself up and keep on going. That um, 
uh, is really important. I'm really glad that you mentioned that. I think that's really important. Tina, how about you? What was your greatest challenge um, going to college? And we'll get to questions. There's a really good question here in chat. Go ahead. Yeah, Tina. I'll just add on to Vincent's point. Time management was also a big struggle for me, you know, having to work to afford college and then having to um, or not having to, I wanted to be involved in my community and in my clubs and have a life outside of my academics. And so that played a big part in having to manage my time. But I was really glad to, you know, have other resources to find funding for college and other resources to help navigate my way through college. And um, another struggle, I think, was just in general, being a first generation college student, I didn't know which path that I was going to be going on. I was making my own way. Um, and so I was really glad to have mentors that I met in, you know, the different organizations I was involved in to help guide me and give me perspective in order to make informed decisions about how I wanted to go about my college career. That's great. Yeah. It's like, especially if you are first generation, like you mentioned, you go, there's no one there ahead of time to tell you what to expect. It can be helpful to have somebody to help you. So that kind of segues, and um, I'll start with you, Tina, in the sense of you went through the summer program that Amanda runs, the orientation program. How was it helpful to you, especially as a first generation student? Yeah, so I just remember one of the sessions we were planning out our academic roadmap. And I am the type of person who wants to know what's going on when. And so during this session, we mapped out, you know, every semester, what classes would we be taking? What would I take my freshman year? Um, what that looked like when I would be estimated to graduate and things like that. And so that provided me with a visual of how I was going to be able to plan my schedule. So when I came time to the San Jose State orientation, I already knew what classes I was going to sign up for. We had already planned ahead of time. And if these classes weren't available, I already had a backup plan. I wasn't sitting in the computers having a meltdown about what classes to take next because I wasn't sure. And so I think that um, having solidified an academic plan was the most helpful part of being in the program with me and not only that, I was able to meet some friends to start off my college career, make that a little bit less intimidating. And we were also provided with um, a Spartan gift card that helped fund some of my books in the beginning and got right. to use that in the student union and a lot of different perks. But definitely the organization schedule part of it was most helpful for me. That's great. Thank you. Vincent, how about you? What did you find most helpful with the summer program? I found it really nice that I was able to go onto campus before like actually starting out as a student at San Jose State. So we had a lot of the sessions that I attended in 2019, I think maybe like three of them that actually met at San Jose State. So I got to go and like get lost on campus to find my way to where we were supposed to be meeting and just kind of like be able to walk around and get that college feeling. I remember one of the sessions um, that was really important in addition to the scheduling one that Tina mentioned uh, was the session where I was able to actually walk around campus and find my classes once I was signed up for them. Um, so that kind of gave me the confidence to like go on campus the first day and just know what's available to me. And also to be able to learn from all the different resource centers. Um, we had an opportunity to be able to, to meet them at the summer program, they were out tabling. So I was able to talk to some of them, which helped me get involved um, at San Jose State pretty early on. Um, so just the summer program was really helpful in that sense of like being able to get uh, adapted to like a new school, a big environment. Um, and I actually have like a perspective from like both ends because I was on the side where I was like a student who attended the summer program and I also helped other students by mentoring them in the following oh, years. Yeah. Yeah. So like helping students transition in an online semester, like to be able to learn about San Jose State was also um, a really hard because like I just had my first semester in college and then boom, the pandemic hit. And it was just like relearning everything again, uh, learning about like online resources available to students, um, trying to be able to find services. It's like the summer program, the benefit of it is that like knowing people like Amanda and Eric and uh, just having names to faces so you can contact them. It's not like just a big intimidating university. There's these people who are specifically here to support Eastside students. Oh, 
That's great. Well, I have a final question for the two of you, but I have a question here in the chat that Amanda responded to, but I'm gonna ask Amanda to respond um, in person. But the question was um, to Vincent's earlier um, question about, you know, kind of trying to figure out what you're gonna be doing and so forth. Are there programs that help students work on aligning themselves with what they want to do when they finally figure it out, say after the first year? And Amanda, you had a good response there. Do you wanna comment on that? Of course. So there are several things. So the one that I mentioned, of course, is our Spartan Eastside Promise program, where our team of peer mentors, so Vincent was actually one of our peer mentors as well, helped many, many students to be able to work along our growth pledge. This is a 10 step project that we have for our new incoming students. It's required for all of our freshmen to go through, meet with a peer mentor and start to develop their educational plan prepare to meet with an academic advisor, meet with a career counselor as well, as well as explore the different resources. So we serve to be able to connect students to those. In addition to us, we also have career counselors in our career center to be able to explore not only major, uh, rather not only career options, but also majors as well. So if a student is in a major and doesn't know what they could do with it, or they're undeclared and they're still trying to figure out what it is they wanna do. They have a job in mind, but not a major in mind. That's a great resource as well. As well as for San Jose State, we are divided into multiple colleges based off of field of study. So think engineering, education, things of that nature, all of which have student success centers and advisors within them as well that we work very close with to make sure students are on that right path. Thank you, Amanda. And um, just so you know, too, one of the next program that we want to develop with the foundation or support and align with what San Jose State is doing is to match students with mentors out in the field, whether it be the business world, the education world, the nonprofit world. Um, so that's just something we're just going to be, uh, we're just planning and um, beginning. And we hope to kind of, uh, by the time some of you start getting um, enrolling in the San Jose State, we'll have some of that up and running. One final question for Vincent and Tina. Um, what final bit of advice would you give to the students um, that might be listening today? Um, just anything you'd like them to know that would help them along the way? You've said a lot of great things already. So um, Vincent and then Tina. I would say my biggest piece of advice is to ask questions because there's a lot of people out there, whether it be from your teachers, your parents, community members um, who have been through college and like that process, especially um, figuring out the complex systems and like what it takes to apply. There's um, just a lot of people who are willing to support and help you explore your interests. So ask questions, be open to learning. And um, there are lots of people who wanna reach, help you reach your goals. So just ask a lot of questions and be curious, yeah. Ask questions, open to learning and know there are people there that want to help you. Thank you. Yep. Tina, how about you? What advice would you give? It's very similar to Vincent's, but um, overall, it's okay to be scared because I know that the future can be very overwhelming, but it's what you're going to do with that fear and use that as motivation to find different resources to help you because there are a lot of people that are there willing to help. You know, um, you can always reach out to um, any connections that you have, and they might have another connection that you could connect with just to learn more about the field. And it's okay if you don't have everything figured out now. And even when you start college, it's still okay if you don't have everything figured out because there's still a lot of time and resources to help you find your path. Thank you. I want to thank Vincent and Tina. You're terrific. It's, um, I wish I had that kind of advice when I was going to school, and I'm sure it's going to be helpful for those that are going to be listening. Thank you very much for being with us. Amanda, thank you so much for being with us this evening and your usual great presentation on uh, San Jose State. We do um, have some other people we would like to thank. Um, so uh, we are a volunteer board, by the way, so we do the work, and we just have a couple of part-time people that are indispensable to us. Uh, Peter is one of them. Thank you very much. Handles all our communication. And, um, and so we want to thank um, Ross Stores, the House Family Foundation, one of our um, top uh, supporters and supervisor, Otto Lee, 
who gave us some funding for our mentor program this year. And of course, Excite, which you saw in terms of the uh, presentation uh, earlier. We wanna thank you all for being with us this evening. We're gonna have other, um, we're gonna have other presentations. Uh, before I go, I wanna make sure we, um, we don't have Glenn Vanderzee under, do we, the superintendent? I don't believe so, no. I do wanna point out that uh, Dave House is actually with us here tonight himself. He's been enjoying- Dave, the we have Dave House from the House <laughs> Family Foundation. Thank he you for here. being here, Dave. Thank Dave you, Dave was our uh, honoree this year, actually, at the Hall of Fame dinner and is one of our biggest supporters. So thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it. And um, I think that covers everything for this evening, unless we have any final questions. I'm going to check in. Uh, yeah, Manny, I was going to say we could uh, throw it out there. Uh, uh, William and Lynn, if you could just announce again that we, um, if anyone would like interpretation or has a question in, in Spanish or Vietnamese, um, we can take those now. Right. Are there any questions that came up? Sí, nuevamente, si alguien tiene alguna pregunta. Quý vị có câu hỏi gì không? Sorry. No problem. Sorry, Lynn. So, um, any, any any questions from anyone at all at this point? You can feel free to unmute yourself and uh, go ahead and ask. And we've got Amanda here, still from San Jose State. We have our students, and then Manny and myself here to answer on behalf of the foundation. But no pressure. I think we answered the question that was in the chat earlier. So thank you, Amanda. Thank you so much again for your presentation and for all your work um, and your team's work. Um, I know you uh, you're working overtime right now, so you're doing a great job for all of these students. So thank you so much. Thank you. And I just got a call here from Glenn, but I think uh, I had a hard time getting on. So we're just going to say thank you very much. We will have other presentations, so please let your friends know and other family members. We want to make sure you know about the Spartan Eastside Promise. It is a tremendous opportunity. Thank you, Peter, for putting the information uh, with the foundation. You can get all the information uh, there as well. Yep. And we look forward to um, seeing you in the future. Peter, any final comments? Yeah, I just want to point out, um, if you if you head to our website, you will find links over to um, the Spartan Promise uh, in, uh, webpage on the San Jose State website. And Amanda has been, um, has been posting links as well as myself in the chat. So if you want to download the chat before you leave, and we'll obviously, um, we've recorded this, so we'll make this available um, if folks want to share it with friends, right? Uh, share this presentation. We're happy to make it available on our YouTube. Um, yeah, and I just want to thank everyone again for, for coming. And thank you, Manny, for emceeing our, our proceedings tonight, as always. <laughs>